hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are a new type of zero emission vehicle that's just about uh, to be introduced commercially. Compared to, say, gasoline vehicles, one of the big advantages is it's zero emission. You have no emissions of either pollutants or greenhouse gases from the tailpipe of a hydrogen car. Fuel cell vehicles have been under development for a long time. People have been doing uh, research on them really since the 1990s and before. And over time, the technology has really progressed to the point that now we have fuel cell vehicles where you can fit the fuel cell under the hood of the car, you have the good performance and so on. So the technology has really been advancing. The automakers have put a lot of time and money into perfecting this technology and getting it to the point where it's ready for commercialization, which we expect to see over the next couple of years. Some of the challenges for hydrogen, though, is that we don't have hydrogen available at every refueling station in the country. So we need to build what's called a hydrogen infrastructure or a network of stations so that people can easily refuel their cars. There's been a lot of interesting thinking on how to build a hydrogen infrastructure, especially over the last couple of years. When people first started looking at this, say in California, the idea was we'll put a hydrogen station every 20 miles along the interstates. But the problem was that most people lived in cities and that wouldn't really adequately serve their needs. So over time, we evolved toward uh, schemes where we had stations in cities and then most recently a so-called cluster strategy where we put the early stations near where the early adopters of the technology live. And that enables people to refuel quickly to be maybe uh, no more than a few minutes away from a nearby hydrogen station so they have that convenience that they need. So there are a certain number of costs in doing this and early on it'll be uh, difficult for those fuels, for hydrogen to compete with other fuels because it's going to be offered in relatively small quantities and small stations. So to support the development of this in a number of places around the world, including California, but also Europe and Japan, uh, we've had government support to build the really early infrastructure to, uh, to get that out there so the cars uh, can be refueled. And then, uh, according to our estimates, after a few years, maybe something like five to ten years, the network should build up enough to the point where it'll be uh, self-sustaining and economically viable. We're going to see fleets of hydrogen vehicles introduced regionally, let's say in particular cities, for example, something like Southern California, and along with that a network of stations. And we'll get to try this out at scale. Uh, and that'll be very exciting and we'll really see how consumers react to these vehicles, how they're adopted, and how this all progresses. So um, the whole enterprise has never been as serious or focused as it is now to bring out hydrogen fuel cells.